I feel like the most crucial hand definitely was the hand between me and Fedor. Obviously it was a massive pot and Fedor is the best player left at that point. So to be able to get him down to a short stack essentially um, and to have what, I don't know, like 50 or 60% of the chips in play after that pot is very pivotal. There's a lot of hands along the way that I feel really proud of, that I feel good about the way that I played them. But for sure at that stage, there was probably no more important hand to me getting to heads up a jungle. I have to say there were a lot of really good players. I have a lot of respect for all players though, whether they are, you know, the legends of the game or some of the more inexperienced ones. So I never go in underestimating anybody, but of course I was happy when in the first round, you know, Daniel and Jason Kuhn and Michael Soiza and Kevin, they all get eliminated. Um, so yeah, when I first initially came in, I thought my chances were pretty good. I still am very confident in my own game, but they got a lot better after they got eliminated. There's this element once you're in a team that you don't want to let them down. You know, it's okay to maybe punt when it's your own chips, your own money, um, and nobody else's tournament life depends on it, right? But in that situation, I felt very responsible, not just for me, but for them continuing on in the game. So of course it was amazing to go back and to get this validation that I made the correct plays, even though in the moment you have to just focus on making the best decision possible and you try to not think about all that other stuff, but it's really, really hard. But I have to say our team camaraderie is a huge, huge part of why I think I did so well in the game overall. So I feel really thankful that I were in two great teams with people that I really liked and that I felt like we respected that team dynamic. I could get into, you know, really technical specific details about why I use the time banks in each spot. I mean, with the Andy spot, it was so important because if I made the call there and I was correct, uh, he would be down to like 12 or 13 bigs. Um, and Andy's not really familiar with shoving ranges because he's a cash game player. So I felt like that would have basically closed the door in that situation. But something that I didn't say until now is that um, I had allotted a certain number of time banks that I would use, a certain number of coins that I'd be willing to spare because I basically came into it with a projected number of how many coins we would get each round if we were to keep moving on. So once I kind of got this inkling that the number of coins would equal the number of big blinds, which is something that me and Josh kept talking about and that's what we ended up with was this is how they're gonna format it later on. We took that, we ran with it and I knew like the difference in a six max sit and go with like 150 or 200 BBs versus 210 BBs is not gonna be that big of a difference. And so I already knew I would be willing to use a certain number of gold coins throughout and that's what I did. I never went past that maximum in my head and I felt really good because in those moments that I used the gold coins to make the decisions, I ended up making the right decision. So, I mean, not trying to be results oriented, but I have to be happy about that.